Hello and welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Cory, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Ethan Ruperellia. Hello. Why was that a question? <laughs> This week we're talking about polishing off plastics, but first we got to thank all of our new patrons. Thank you, patrons. We really want to thank you. And if you want to be a patron, head over to Patreon. And if you do go to there, you can vote for topics like the one that we're talking about today and submit them and all of the, look, just go and read the Patreon stuff, okay? It tells you everything over there. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. And the thing I'm going to tell you is I'm gonna ask you a question. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, head down to the comments. If you're listening on Spotify, head down to the Spotiments. And if you are listening anywhere else, here is what I want you to do. Destroy the world, but don't do it quickly. Do it very, very slowly. Create long chain polymers, use them everywhere. Break them down, turn them into tiny microscopic things that poison everything. Um, uh, I don't really know where to go from this. Uh, then you could, I don't know, ask a sailor to tell me. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in good with the sailors. The question is, uh, what's your favorite food? Plastic. That's very unhealthy, but good to know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So obviously we're talking about plastic today, but not just plastic. We're talking about a plastic eating bacteria because in 2001, Japanese scientists discovered something mental when they looked at a plastic recycling plant. They found a little bacteria, or, you know, like an average size bacteria. They found bacteria, okay? Mm -hmm. Eating uh, plastic bottles, digesting them. That's pretty cool. It is. It's yeah. pretty cool. That's, that's pretty great. That's the episode. Yeah. See ya. Bye. No, so we're obviously going to be talking about this plastic eating bacteria because our patrons have demanded that we do it. And unfortunately, we must bow to democracy's whims. Yeah. I've seen the hostage note. It's not great. <laughs> It, almost exclusively from Hello Magazine, though, all the little off cutting. So I don't know what that was about. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know. Like, it's... choose another one. I know. Okay, We're... for it, like, at least. British Vogue. Come on, guys, do better. I hit my limit at okay. I could not name another magazine if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk a little bit about plastic pollution before we get onto this plastic eating bacteria, because mm. I just want to make you sad for a little bit. Yeah. Also, it's probably good to have a background to understanding uh, why plastic eating bacteria might be uh, kind of important, you know, in case you've had your head under some kind of plastic infused rock for the past <laughs> uh, 50 years. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, so what's what's the deal with plastic pollution, Ethan? What do you think about it? Not great. Really? No. You want more? You're pro-pollution. Yeah, it, it's been said of me, I am pro-pollution. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, just, it's, it's, it's not good in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good in it. What, a, what an astute observation. <laughs> I'm so glad I chose to have you on this podcast and not anyone, anyone else. <laughs> anyway, no, carry on. <laughs> it's building up. It's been building up for ages, mm -hmm. infiltrating water systems. It's breaking down into microplastics, destroying habitats, choking turtles. Um, and it's unsustainable for our future, right? So mm -hmm. we need to find ways to not only replace plastics mm -hmm. but also get rid of the massive amounts that are circulating in like the waters and you know rubbish heaps around yeah, the world very 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 true so many varies there for you because <laughs> I, th I think i know I, one more very please well i was gonna say the veracity was Ooh, there okay yeah. okay oh, right, i like one. it where he's finding the scope of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> making our vocabulary much larger very bigger i would say very bigger <laughs> <laughs> got a big vocabulary no idea how to use the words oh but I, I i definitely <laughs> quintessential them <laughs> is that, is that right a, yeah i think so you've got a very big vocabulary but what do you do with it That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you're so right right you've touched on pretty much all of the points so plastic pollution uh yeah it it impacts Pretty much every single thing. Uh, yeah. You mentioned microplastics a little bit, I think, mm. and I may have alluded to them earlier. Uh, mm. Essentially, plastic is very, very useful. It's, mm. it's fantastic little kind of material. You know, you can make bottles, you can make other things. Other things. No, uh, the, uh, bottles and more. <laughs> uh, there are two types of things in this universe. Bottles <laughs> and other things. Name me one single thing that does not fall into either of those two categories. Uh, um, um, Schrodinger's bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I think by definition it is a bottle. <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Schrodinger's cat. By the way, someone here who studied like quantum mechanics, yeah. no? Uh, Schrodinger's cat 
the the thought experiment is not about whether or not it is a cat. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I'm saying the bottle is dead. <laughs> the, the bottle is both dead and alive at the same time. How how about um what is it a Klein bottle? That's still a bottle. You can't just name like. But it's a weird bottle, yeah. and I feel like some people would argue about the definition of a bottle. Okay. And if it encloses mm-hmm. a, a finite volume. And therefore, if you have enough people arguing that it's a bottle and enough people arguing it's not a bottle, Mm -hmm. it is therefore both and neither. I would say, I'd contend that you're very weird, (laughs) but you're still a person. Barely. But you're still a person, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But uh, if uh, are we are we fighting over the de- the definition of person? Okay, I'm going to swiftly move on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So plastic is present in so many of our ecosystems, marine ecosystems especially, because we just like chuck it into the ocean, and who cares? Uh, it's not just little microplastics that are causing issues. I'll get into why that's an issue in a bit. But also uh, the bigger plastics. I'm sure we've all seen the episode of the of the Simpsons, no? Uh-huh. Wherein, yeah. um, <laughs> wherein. <laughs> Lisa shows Mr. Burns that fish can get caught in the six pack holders um, mm-hmm. that were super prevalent, you know, before, and I think are maybe a little bit less common you, it's now. It's kind of you find them in like like corner shops, yeah, kind of still around yeah. there. I, yeah. Not as common as I feel that they used to be. So mm. they're sort of the six pack can holders, the little plastic things that are like tiny little nets, and fish mm. get caught in them, animals get caught in them. Uh, Lisa shows Mr. Burns that that happens, and he makes a big old net to drag the sea floor. <laughs> That's that's basically it. That's, uh, it. <laughs> that's 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 real like science fact right there. But like uh, but like it's look the Simpsons is pretty fact. it's pretty factual. <laughs> yeah, I've yet to see something on the Simpsons that could not happen in real life. Do not say a word. I'm moving on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it can suffocate things. They can get all caught in it. If you're a sea turtle, you might see um, what do you think is a lovely, tasty little jellyfish. And oh no, mm. I have plastic in my body because it was a plastic bag. Uh, uh, oh. Thank God they paid a, what, 15 pence tax on it now? Jesus Christ. I hope that's <laughs> going to something. Oh, you're saying it's just going to whatever the shops want it to go to? Oh. <sighs> Goods. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um plastic pollution is a massive issue. Um microplastics, do you know what the issue with microplastics is? Do you know how they kind of work? So I I, I guess you've got you've got your larger plastics, microplastics. I've got all my larger plastics. You've got yeah. all your larger I keep plastics. them all in a big plastic tub. <laughs> Which in itself will break down to microplastics one day. Um, <laughs> and then I'll put that into an even bigger tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cycle continues. Um so really <laughs> the the issue is that the microplastics, I guess, they're not ones that you can just easily filter out. Yeah. They're not ones that, you know, if you put it through a, you know, a net, mm-hmm. you're not going to just be able to remove them. Even if you put it through, um, you know, a sieve, it's not going to do the job. Even some like coffee filter paper, it's mm. not going to do the job. Even and, and I think that that means that it's an issue in terms of our biology as well. Like if you've got it passing through certain membranes that shouldn't be allowing um, kind of inorganic particles like that through, mm. right? Yeah, so uh, to be clear, a microplastic is something that's five millimeters in length or smaller, mm. right? So you would be able to filter out some microplastics, right? Mm. But other microplastics can be much smaller than that and yes, get into our sort of systems and really mess mm. things up. So do you know about sort of the idea of bioaccumulation? Do you know what I mean if I say that? Is it just lots of things building up? In yeah. your system? Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, so, right. If you think about, uh, say, a fish mm-hmm. in the water, yeah. right? A little tiny fish. Yeah. It eats some microplastic. Uh-huh. And it's, it's you know, it's fine. Because uh-huh. it's only got a little dose of the microplastic, right? Yeah. Now, if that fish gets eaten by a larger fish, mm-hmm. and that larger fish eats lots of little fish, uh-huh. then that's got a way, that's got, like, quite a lot of microplastic in it now because it's got all the microplastic from all those little fish yeah. right and then me a big old person i eat that bigger fish and then lots of other bigger fish and lots of other animals that have eaten other animals that have eaten other animals that have eaten microplastic all of that sort of stuff right yeah now you're gonna accumulate more of this toxin in your body in this in a similar sense where like if you eat like lots of uh, tuna you can get uh, mercury poisoning sort of thing right yeah, yeah. like you can build up something in your body that would maybe be harm, like less harmful um, in the quantity that it's in to something below you in mm. the food chain because right. um, the quantity that's in each organism in the lower rung of the food chain is not at a dangerous level. But because you're consuming that organism, you are accumulating, you mm. know, um, sort of higher levels of that toxin. Is it like apple pips? 
because they've got cyanide in them, if you eat a load of them, mm -hmm. then that builds up. And while it's harmless in smaller quantities, maybe the fact that you're having more and more of those depend on them. I don't know. Yeah, it's not dissimilar to that. Yeah. So I suppose like, yeah, one, if you think about it, one apple pip is, it has cyanide in it, but not enough to harm you. No. But lots of them do. Yes. But I, I guess it's, it's more about the idea of something increasing across the food chain. Right. Um, to, to more dangerous levels. Right. Okay. I mean, it's not just a case of like, I mean, yeah, I guess it's like, uh, you know the kind it, it that what you're kind of describing is your general sort of like levels of toxicity mm. um the idea i want to get across here is more specifically um things like increasing as you go up the food chain right i see okay because yeah, yeah. You know, the amount uh, uh, like if you have a tiny amount of microplastics it's going to be harmful but not enough to kill you mm. um and if you eat animals that eat other animals or if you eat um something that's consumed microplastics you know, if you're eating a lot of those, then you're essentially just getting more microplastics yeah. in your system than that one small thing it's would have done. a higher proportion yeah. than lower down the food chain. So it just incrementally builds up yeah. as, as more things eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so the microplastics are a real problem, right? Because they can leach like sort of toxic chemicals from their surface into your cells, causing damage. I think they can also be like carcinogens as mm. well. Like they just, they just cause damage, right? Mm. It's just not good for you, right? In the same sense that no, like, okay. A plastic in a landfill is going to release like toxic fumes into the air. It, your body is the landfill here, my friend. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, and it's not just in the air; it's in all of you. I mean, I shovel enough shit into my body that I feel like a landfill is a pretty appropriate description. Anyway, plastic and also just uh, don't don't look at me like that. I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking like McDonald's. Uh, I'm with, uh, with like the junk food. It's just not. It's, it may as well be plastic and cardboard. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I <laughs> feel like so I'm, not, I'm not good. <laughs> it really does just a little nibble on some, you know, polystyrene. It really, <laughs> it really just sets my day off on the right foot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've tried to cover the idea that plastic pollution is bad. You've kind of turned it around its, on its head um, mm. at the end there. But plastic pollution, <laughs> not a good thing. Remember not, that one. Not good. I just said sorry. not, not good. Not, not, no. No, no, no I was emphasizing the nots. It's like love, love, you know, it's, um, it's, it, it doesn't that? work if it's a it's... negative, you can't emphasize a negative. No, you can, it's, um, it's ablaut reduplication, right? Is when you're saying something to like emphasize it another time. It's like love, love, or, you know, do you like them or do you like, like them? Yeah. Yeah. Are either of those things, um, negative words as in, do they, are they modifiers that make something the opposite of what it otherwise would be? I, I, are they I, I, mean, I, I guess so. But then. You can have like two positives that make a negative, right? I don't know. Give me an example. Well, if 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 I were to, you know, <laughs> tell you a potentially quite dubious fact and you turn around to me and you're like, yeah, sure. Oh, it works. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah there we go. <laughs> I was like, um, uh, two positives to make a negative. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you. We got that. Okay. Yeah. I, I caught up. I yeah. done caught up. Well done. Good. Anyway, hey, so not, <laughs> not, 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 not. And that's it. That's. <laughs> Even more intense and also sound in terms of my negatives. It's Happy. bad, I think, is yeah. an easy way to... Bad. Good. Is so... that a double negative? <laughs> Look, I'm just going to move on. Um, we've spoken about plastic pollution. Um, oh, I mean, I should say, uh, about 16% of plastic produced is recycled to make new plastic, apparently, according apparently. to the BBC. I've okay. seen lower numbers. We might get to that in a bit. But uh, we've already spoken about plastic pollution. Probably should have done this first. What's plastic? <laughs> plastic is, I guess, a uh, in 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 a chemical sense, mm. it's a polymer, right? It's yeah. it's it's repeated chains of smaller kind of subunits that are kind of stitched together to make. And then they have a, a dom material. in polycule. You said right. No. <laughs> you're talking about a. You're talking about a. A subdom. Yeah, that's exactly it. Poly polycule. Cule. Yeah, polymer. Actually. Oh, so it's a polycule with mermaids oh. and mermen. That's how that works. So a polymer <laughs> is like a long chain <laughs> molecule. There we go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> made up of lots of shorter chain molecules stitched together. Yeah, made up of sort of like uh, individual units, right? Yeah. Subunits, as you as you said. Oh wow, you there gave you the whole answer. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was too busy thinking about polycule. I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, a polymer. Um, you get like uh, a monomer, right? Yeah. Mono one, poly many. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Monogamy. Yeah. 
Polygamy. What's a monocule? Is it's, that a thing? It's just me. Yeah, that's what <laughs> you're me. doing right, right now. This is your current. <laughs> this is your current situation. Guys, guys, leave me alone to my monocule. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I need to protect my peace right now. Oh man, I'm really, I really hope that like asexual, aromantic people start using the word monocule. monocule. I like, please, for the love of God, if you're asexual or aromantic and single, please start saying you're in a monocule. But I feel like, I feel like the issue is that it's so closely, it sounds so much like monocle, right? <laughs> so I'm just imagining like the Monopoly man or whoever, just like by himself oh. with his little monocle. Uh, <laughs> The Monopoly man, um, he doesn't always have a monocle. Is that one of those um, Mandela effect ones? Yeah, I I genuinely think he does not. No, he doesn't have a monocle. Who's a famous guy who does have a monocle? I feel like that should be a thing, no? Um, or f- famous person. Oh, yes, because women can. I have women, never seen women, a woman where... Women are allowed to see two. <laughs> no, I like to see one. <laughs> monocle. <laughs> I've, I don't think I've ever seen a woman... Wear a monocle. No, no. That because is insane. It, it is mad, isn't it? It's it's sexism has run rampant, honestly. <laughs> like I, I think I think misogyny is like yeah. this is really highlighted to me. Mm. This one this specific one observation <laughs> has highlighted to let, me let, let, that let misogyny have, is a problem. Yeah. How about a womanical? <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Monocles you, for all. We got a guy liner, we gotta <laughs> have women. Okay. We'll take a bit of time brainstorming the uh, the gender neutral version because I think uh, I think we've exhausted our brains with the rest. Oh yeah, I don't even I don't want to try that. You're right. so right. What I do want to try is to get through this episode without too many more tangents. But uh-huh. that's not gonna happen. So um, a polymer <laughs> made up of monomers. It is uh, it's a long chain um, of sort of like repeated segments. If that makes mm-hmm. sense, right? Yeah. Um, you're probably aware of like many polymers like yeah it's it's kind of if you imagine a subunit to be a single person then maybe a polymer would be like a human centipede right and that's the second uh mention of the human centipede on this podcast so far yeah i really feel like you're bringing a sort of human centipede vibe to the podcast that i just can't put my finger on. See, whenever i was <laughs> whenever i was watching it i just thought to myself what's missing <laughs> from sci guys it's just more mentions of uh, horrendous body horror movies yeah if you were in a human centipede with the sci guys yeah. where would you want to be oh surely it's got to be front Everybody wants to be the front of the yeah, human but with, centipede. Yeah, but with the Psy guys. Come on, that's got to change it a little bit. Listen, Luke's not actually off anyway. He's just right back <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> it's already started. <laughs> oh, God. All right, well, I am I am not going behind. I will be front, thank you very much. Enjoy your place in the middle. Great. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we know what polymers are. DNA is a polymer, for mm. example, you know. Um, can you name any other polymers off the top of your head? Starch? Yeah, starch is a polymer. Yep. Exactly, yeah. Starch is a polymer of glucose. So glucose mm. is a sugar, and then you stitch like a load of them together, you get yeah. some starch. Nice. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Okay. And plastics are the same vibe. You get like a single sort of, um, it's not even really a plastic molecule. You get a single molecule, and you have a long, long chain of that. And it could be a plastic. So they're compounds. Um, they're like really, really large molecules. They're just like so long. Like I can't even describe to you how they're, long. They're, they're, they're so long. Like, I, they're just well, so long. They're very long. Right. Yeah. Think about the longest thing. It's probably longer than that. Man, that's so so long. I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> so he, okay, right. Look, I mean, it, like thousands or millions of atomic mass units. Okay, mm. right. Like uh, atomic mass units. You don't need to worry about that. That translates I into grams I won't because worry my you pretty can't head. <laughs> um, easily do that, or you can easily do that, but it's you can't easily understand what amount that is. Yeah. So, look, put it this way, right? If a normal molecule is like, um, like tens, you know, of mm-hmm. of atomic mass units, this is like thousands or more. Right. Okay. So it's like quite a lot more, right? Because yeah. ten is a lot smaller than a thousand. That's how numbers tend to work. Yeah. yeah this sort of like long chain. Sort mm. of like like sort of nature of them is what gives plastics a, like a lot of their properties. Um, you know they can be molded and shaped, and they can have a certain sort of strength and also plasticity. Is that where that comes from? I would normally say yes, but I know <laughs> that I've not looked that up, and that the world is cruel, and <laughs> it could very well be an orange situation where you'd mm. think one thing was named after the other, but but no, no, no. the fruit. The fruit came first, right? The color came first. Yeah. No, no, the fruit came first. I think the naranja. 
an orange. Oh, I see. Our Naranja became an orange, and we called things red. And then we started calling things orange oh, yes, because they were the right. co- same color right. as an orange. You're right. You're absolutely yeah. Right. And that's just cruel and unusual. And so I don't want to say that plasticity came from the word plastic yeah. um, that we use for the <laughs> material because, do you know what? Someone's going to point out that that might not be the case. Yeah, probably. So there are two different kinds of plastics. Do you know what those might be? The two that I have in my head are thermosetting mm-hmm. and thermo... Oh, God, wait. Thermosetting is where... You, you manipulate it. Uh, the thermo molding or something like that. I so it's know. thermo setting and thermoplastics. It's, oh, fine. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thermoplastics. Um, they. Do you know? Do you know what those two terms mean? Uh, one is basically that it is it becomes more moldable when you apply heat. Right? Yeah. So one is essentially. It, infinitely moldable right um you know you, if you apply heat you can remold and reshape it polystyrene mm. um you can mold it remold it mm. um a thermal setting plastic um it's almost in the name yeah <laughs> you can apply heat and then um you it sets um when it's been molded and then mm. you cannot remold it um, right. even if you reheat it right yeah so um those are the two different sorts of uh plastics mm-hmm. um and it's like, they're really useful, obviously, right? Like, if yeah. you think about it, like, a, a material that you can mold and remold that's strong, lightweight, um, and, you know, you can, like, store things in it. And, uh, like, plastics have kind of made it so that we can store things for much longer mm. than we would have been able to before, right? Yeah. Like, it's lighter than, met- like than you know, metals, mostly, mm. uh, or less dense than most metals. Or glass. or And glass, or glass as well, yeah. Um, and you can you can have it in almost any shape, size, configuration that you want. And because there are so many different kinds of plastics with so many different properties, you know, there's a reason that if you look at some like you know a food package, um, there's a different kind of plastic on the top than mm. there is you know like as the container. Yeah. And there's multiple different kinds of plastic in like loads of different kinds of sort of the, you know, yeah. food containers because it is just really really reliably sort of uh, what's the word flexible versatile versatile right? is, yeah. yeah flexible guess... is a bit confusing but yeah versatile <laughs> is absolutely but like can you imagine like 50 years ago when it when they were when it, or when when they were first invented you can imagine they would have just been absolutely revolutionary you've got this thing you know you must have been searching for ages for a product which is mm. all of that just so versatile does whatever you want it must have seemed like such a miracle of a discovery mm. and then you know it's just it it's it's just a shame that Later down the line, we realize how harmful it actually is. Yeah, when it's in circulation like that. Yeah, it's a shame that that keeps on happening. But so uh, <laughs> plastics. Um, 1907 was the first fully synthetic plastic. Oh wow! And then I think it was sort of 60s and 70s when, like, after the Second World War, where mm. like we really ramped up production, like mass production of plastics. Um, and that was when, like, I would you, know, you could call it the sort of the plastic revolution, where like just so many things became made of plastic, and like yeah. there's so much plastic in this room. Even like looking around this room, like almost like like not almost all of the materials, but like at least fifty percent. Yeah, I'd you've agree. got more of the materials are plastic, so right? And even things that you think aren't plastic are plastic. Like a lot of like s- the fake wood floors, yeah, aren't wood PVC. They're plastic. Yeah, the, you know. it is really useful. And as you're saying, yeah, it sucks that we used it a ton and then realized it was dangerous. It feels a lot like finding out about fossil fuels and yeah. and like you know and how to you know and, and how to make sort of steam engines and like sort of the industrial revolution sort of stuff and we just start pumping mm. all of that stuff into the atmosphere and we're like oh wait no this is bad for us but we're <laughs> we've set up too much infrastructure around using it guess yeah. we'll burn <laughs> and like at this point microplastics i'm i'm bugged by microplastics because like i didn't choose to use Plastics? No, true. And now I just got plastic in me. Yeah, it's, it's it's everybody else's decision. And the thing is, it's I guess because like water supplies are, 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 are so communal in that sense, right? Oh yeah, 100%, as in yeah. like you you know you can have water systems within you know a, a specific country, but it's not going to be a closed system, is it? You're going to be like it goes back into oceans, mm-hmm. it goes back into rivers, it goes back into very protected wildlife areas if you live in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that gets circulated everywhere, and it's even if a specific country tries to take responsibility and stop that, the reality is that it is just, it's going to be a global effort. Yeah. And you can't avoid it. You can't avoid, you know, go, trying to get a clean water supply. It's yeah. a basic human need. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, given the fact that there's a hunk of plastic about the size of the UK floating in the ocean, which yeah. <laughs> I, 
I cannot comprehend that. Like, I'm it's driven insane. from it's one insane. end of the UK to the other. Not that long ago, actually. I went from London up to Edinburgh. Like, not even the full length of the mm. UK. Like, I skipped out a lot of it. I went back down to Leeds within the same sort of 24-hour period. And, like, the fact that it would take that long to get from one end of plastic to another and it's just there yeah. in the ocean? Can we don't just, like, know. can you just, like, go do something about it? <laughs> like maybe what are we, we what are we up to? Can we maybe can we maybe take a minute? Like can we stop all the wars and all that nonsense for just a mo and um or you know forever ideally? But <laughs> it feels like it should be a bit of a priority. Yeah, like it's it's such an insane amount, and it just doesn't feel like it's ever entered like the conversation. No, right? absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, it's like one of those like fun facts that you give I know. <laughs> about. Well, if I say fun fact, it's one of those facts you give uh to induce anxiety about yeah. the climate and our ever looming destruction mm-hmm. you know just one of those little gems yeah yeah, yeah. plastic it. gems plastic gems <laughs> but yeah no so there's those two different kinds of plastic so um you know it's it's really really useful in those different things so thermosets they basically kind of undergo a chemical chemical reaction when they're heated to become like one kind of big mm. molecule um and thermoplastics the moldable ones um those are different they can kind of flow and move past each other the all the sort of long chains which mm. means that you can just heat them up and reorder the chains and then they set uh and then you keep them up again and do that continuously right nice and there were so many different kinds of plastics can you name any any kinds of plastics i mean actually uh, their sort of their shortened names are usually pretty well known you know yeah so polystyrene um mm-hmm. it's classic i mean i said that yeah already um, yeah yeah well i mean i, <laughs> I thought it so uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's the same number one mm. uh polyethylene terephthalate or something along those lines that's that number one recyclable terephthalate terephthalate yeah something like that yeah, yeah. um P-E-T. just pet there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's pet there's PT, maybe? Yeah, probably. P-E-P-E. Yeah, I don't have them all. We've got PVC as well, polyvinyl chloride, which you mentioned. Just loads of peas. They begin with peas a lot. It's because the poly. Yeah. Not because they... Because they're in a in a polycule. Not in a polycule. Because they're in a molecule that is a polymer. There we go. Nailed it. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! <laughs> so, um, yeah, plastics, they're not recycled as much as they, as they should be. You know, if you think about it, glass and um, metals like mm. aluminium, they're pretty much infinitely recyclable. Yeah. You just melt down some glass. It's back to how it was. You got melty yeah. glass and then <laughs> and then you blow it. Um, uh-huh. I always blow things if I want to get always... something. Um, and in this case, you blow glass to get uh-huh. whatever you want from the glass. <laughs> Oh, God. Are and, you proud of yourself? <laughs> and aluminium, you see, it's like a metal. So you heat the metal up, you reshape it. It's it's like basically yeah. infinitely recyclable, right? Yeah. Um, Plastic, mm, not so much. Do you know anything about plastic recycling? I guess it largely depends on the type of plastic that it is, right? I guess the thermosetting ones are going to be more difficult to recycle, and the thermal ones are better. Um, But there are so many, like, carrier bags and, mm. like, films are just, you know, you use them and... Even even if they are theoretically recyclable, the fact is that if the facilities aren't accessible, mm. they're just going to get thrown straight to landfill. Yeah, I mean, so. it'd be great to create jobs when we're running out of jobs, Um, you know, jobs for people who just sort the plastic instead of expecting the consumer to do something yeah. that you know they're not going to do. No. Uh, but yeah, so the issue isn't just accessibility of recycling, right? Like, mm. that is a major issue, obviously, right? Because nobody knows how it works, right? Nobody. And you could say, oh, no. well, well, no, because you need to know about your local recycling plant, what they do. Yeah. You need to know what all the plastics are, which is like means inspecting every single thing before you throw it away. Yeah. Having multiple bins, probably. Yeah. Um, cleaning things out, or maybe you don't have to clean them out because they clean it at the, at the facility. Yeah. Depends on the facility. And then whether or not the council are actually going to collect Exactly. Those. And each one of those is different. Yeah. And even different, yeah, different plants have different ways of processing things. And it's just, it's impossible to know because there's no like transparency along the way. Yeah. So no one, like there's not enough of an effort really to um, recycle plastic, right? And so you mostly just kind of break it down. Um, Like you can break it down into pellets um, is one way of doing it. You kind of like, um, you, you do that and then you melt it down and you can kind of make it into something else. Mm-hmm. Or you can sort of, you know, break it up into fibers and, you know, make uh, like a sort of insulation from that. I've had those it's, in my HelloFresh boxes. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a degradative, uh, degradative, degra, degra, degradative, 
Yeah. Degradative. <laughs> it's a process that is that it de- de- degrades, degrades <laughs> the plastic as yeah. you go through it. That yeah. was a tough one. You got there. That was a little toughy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, by, by which I mean, like, we were talking about blowing glass, right? We were. Speaking of a yeah. toughie. <laughs> That's giving me a toughie. Um... <laughs> So you can like infinitely recycle glass, right? You can, mm. if you've got a, like I say, a glass container or a glass bottle or mm. a glass jar, right? You melt that down, you can make another glass jar. And you can do that as many times as you want, right? Mm-hmm. Many times you want to blow that glass, you go ahead and do it. Um, now, <laughs> plastic, you can't really do that, right? When you're mm. recycling plastic, you're not, because the process of recycling, it usually like sort of degrades the plastic. You're not able to sort of recycle it into a like for like situation, which is why mm. probably why you see so many sort of plastic um, sort of rucksacks and um, plastic shoelaces. You know, mm. like oh, this is made from recycled plastic or plastic pencils or yeah. you know all of these things that say I'm made from recycled plastic. And you're like, hey, why didn't they recycle it back into the More container bottles, that they were yeah. gonna? Why is it becoming all these things that I don't want to be made of plastic? Hey, why are my, why <laughs> is my pencil made of plastic? I'm just getting microplastics. Blah, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, the reason for that is that you can't really sort of recycle you can't infinitely recycle plastic back into the thing mm. that it was before because it just it loses those properties just through you know being being degraded and so we end up having like a real problem when it comes to trying to get trying to get rid of plastic like i, I mean i've got my numbers here in front of me in my notes saying that nine percent of uh plastic in the best case scenario um even gets to a recycling plant, which like the BBC says, sixteen percent of plastic is recycled. Maybe that's in the UK, but um, maybe this number, maybe this nine percent number is globally, but like or in certain countries, maybe in the US. But nine percent even just gets to the recycling plants. Mad. I mean, I think that why now I feel extremely guilty is be when I'm in public, for example, mm. and. Let's not even get yeah. into the whole like Jesus, two, two I different would feel holes guilty going in public if thing. I looked like you as There's- well. <laughs> Doing that to random strangers <laughs> must feel horrible. But you pull through. <laughs> Carry on with your little story. I don't think I want to now. <laughs> it's no. okay. I'll cover my eyes. You don't need to worry. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> there are people listening audio only on this, okay? Yeah, which is like makes sense. If I could listen to this audio only, I would. Like the sight, just... look, truly, if you have not seen Ethan, the sight of the man, oh goodness me, it would simply oh, drive you. <laughs> He was what was in the bird box. <laughs> not seen that movie. Is, is no, it good? it's a good reference. Okay. Um, not accurate, but <laughs> <laughs> but I like that you tried. <laughs> yeah, staying topical. Um, from three years ago, four, five, five. I, I honestly think it was more. <laughs> I, I remember watching that at Christmas when I had norovirus. Good times. Um, I think the norovirus actually made it terrible. It was from 2018. It's six years old. Carry on with six your story about being is. guilty about being outside in public. Um, it's so- <laughs> When I am walking along the street and I have a piece of plastic mm. from, you know, I've just had some food and not having the facilities, I I do not eat plastic. <laughs> Don't let it be said. You but said like, that at I the beginning. I enjoy munching on my monomers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... It's when it's when you're walking by and there's just no recycling bins mm. around the place and there is just not there's no facilities to actually try yeah. and help you make the right decision in that moment. Yeah, no, it's horrid. Yeah. yeah. Or even when there is a recycling bin, mm-hmm. but that bin goes into the same bin as the yeah. not recycling bin. Yeah. Yeah. Or it you know, or it just goes to like it, yeah, they've got recycling bins, but they just take it to the same place. Like I know. It, 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 it is frustrating as a consumer, as an individual, as a citizen. To feel somewhat helpless, like yes, we mm. can vote, yes, we can protest, all of these sorts of things, right? But there's no sort of immediate change one can make, because um, taking taking on all of the responsibility of like recycling plastic oneself is obscene. Like mm. it's unrealistic. It is quite literally against the entire point of having a society and mm. a community, right? We didn't settle down and start agriculture um, and create cities and towns and you know communities so that one person could be entirely responsible for the entirety of their own like needs. No, the yeah. reason we did it is to share the load of things. The reason that like a council exists is such that I, as an individual, do not need to maintain the road outside of the front of my house or anything else like that because a group of people that I am giving money to 
will do that shit for me. <laughs> That's their job. Yeah. And I support, like, you know, whatever by doing my job, which is <laughs> complaining on the internet. Yeah. I'm adding to the conversation. You this are. is an important job. And you're a valued member of society. Well, let's not go that far. No, okay. <laughs> I'm barely a member of society. <laughs> and I'm only valued by people on the internet. And I'm not even sure if they're real. I, I don't think you're included within that either. Um, but yeah. I value you. And that's why I have no respect for you. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it, it is it is irritating mm. to to just be a participant in a system that is so averse to any change. Yeah. It's like screaming into the void, like, mm. oh, look, this ship is going over a waterfall. Should we maybe put down the anchor, which will absolutely, you know, slow us down, um, if not save us entirely, uh -huh. and potentially give us some time to come up with a solution to deal with this waterfall situation? And people are like, nah, full steam ahead. Yeah. Dropping the anchor would mean some extra work. And also, <laughs> I wouldn't get to party so hearty. Also, that anchor's so heavy. Like, yeah. it's just going to take some time. It's a bit of a distraction. I think we've got other things to worry about, you mm. know? You know? Yeah. I don't think, are we even? I'm gonna make it to the waterfall <laughs> it's so well, far away i feel like that's tomorrow's problem i'll be off the ship by the time we hit that waterfall okay uh but yeah no so uh, it's a real it's a real problem when it comes to recycling right so what we tend to do with plastic is we burn it yeah burn burn Woo! probably not a good idea to do that any Ooh. idea why that is uh is it because it produces harmful gases chemicals that go up into the atmosphere and mm. contribute to global warming. You have quite the knack for answering questions in the same cadence as a five-year-old. But yeah, you are Thank not you. incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> You're not incorrect. No. Um, yeah. So greenhouse gases uh, released uh, in, you know, um, exacerbating the issue mm. uh, of climate change. Love that. Um, <laughs> that's why it's so bloody hot in here in May. Um, so, is it? I guess it's it's basically just burning fossil fuels, but with extra steps in between, right? Yeah. Because you you you've got oil that's turned into plastic, mm -hmm. and then plastic which is burned, which just provides some energy. Yeah, in, in use, certain plants. You, if, I mean, yeah, yeah. If you use it, if you like have a plant that uses that energy. Yes. Right. True. Like yeah. you need to ensure that that's, but then it also releases toxic fumes. Yeah. Which yeah. is not. It's not great, right? I wouldn't endorse it, no. No, no, no. no you no. just eat it. That's I'm not, I'm not going to be standing outside picketing saying, we want more toast safe food. Yeah, well, I mean, some people basically are. Um, <laughs> I mean, and to, to kind of touch on the plastic pollution again, right? So um, I said in 2001, these Japanese scientists discovered mm -hmm. this bacteria, right? Um, it's been about 20 odd years since 2001, right? Something like that, 20 odd. Or more if you're talking about the space odyssey. But <laughs> <laughs> So... Monolith. What about the polyliths? Huh? <laughs> so yeah, it's been about twenty odd years <laughs> since that, right? Uh, how much plastic uh, waste do you think we have generated since then, as an entire collective human race? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm thinking about the amount that in a given week in my household we make, I think I think we it's like three bins of recycling. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work through my maths here. Okay. Oh wait, no, it's gonna be a really work about it. Do, do give me one whole number. So. If we're talking like three different uh, bags of recycling a week, and each of them is probably going to be, I don't know, five kilograms. That's 15 kilograms, three of us, five kilograms a week. Great. 20, five, uh, 250 kilograms of me just every year. Wow, God, you that's look great scary, for 250 actually. kilograms. Oh, God. <laughs> um, 250 kilograms. And then, and then mm. uh, in, in 23 years or so, that's, oh, God. 500, 5,000, multiply that by the 7 billion people, 35 mm -hmm. trillion, so like kilograms, which will be uh, 35 billion tons. Okay, well, you're off by... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it was 2.5 billion tons, so... Okay. Like, you know... You're... Yeah. Oh, it's you know, fine, then. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's better so than fine. you thought. I think you're forgetting how light plastic is i yeah, think five kilograms of plastic waste is probably not as much like yeah, i don't right, think actually. it's five kilograms i think it's probably closer to like i mean i think it's probably like not even much more than a, a kilogram or so like if yeah. you think like a bag of flour you know, a yeah, kilogram bag of flour you're right quite, a kilogram is a lot more than you'd think plastic's pretty light it's yeah, very light you're right yeah so what you're saying is 
Bad maths. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible maths. Terrible maths. Nah, you're off by like, what, the factor of 10? Is, is, who cares? It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so 2.5 billion tons in that sort of 20 year span. And we're going to we're gonna keep on making more, obviously, because we've not stopped making no. plastic, have we? Um, and, <laughs> and I just want to touch on the issue with microplastics again, because like that period of time, that amount of like plastic being produced mm. back then, microplastic did not even exist as a term. I think microplastic came about in about 2004 ish. Oh, really? Yeah. It's Very that recent. recent. It's, it's about 20 years old. Right. Huh. Um, and it's it's a Gen Z, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah no um microplastics didn't like as a concept did not even exist then they definitely wow. did exist like literally in the world we just did not have a name for them did they really. just think that they like disappeared after a few years look uh, man I, I think we just don't think about it or people do think about it and the companies that make the money ignore them it's like smoking yeah. you know yeah. we knew that was a problem and they were like yeah but we could make money. You know, and we love money. Yeah, and now what we'll do is we'll pivot, um, and we'll say smoking bad. Yeah, smoking bad, of course. Vapes vaping. is fine, Sexy, and also we'll cool. start marketing vape Fruity. to children, just like we marketed smoking to children yeah. before we were stopped from doing that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe I, I've got an idea. Why don't we just say mm, no, no, like sort of tobacco no, nicotine no companies allowed stuff. Here you go. Yeah, none of that. Yeah. You're not you're not allowed to advertise it at all. In fact, you're you're not allowed to if you're not allowed to make it like sort of desirable for children because no. that's evil, I think. But I want to suck on a little stick that tastes of lemon and lime and makes you uh... okay. Let me get some lemons and limes and no, I'll, no, I'll give you no, a lovely little no, no, no what? No. I was gonna make you a nice little meal, some crudite. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you want me to buy bite into that. I heard it's a lot like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I said, it's you know the, the idea of bioaccumulation. It's not just in animals though. Uh, it can also get into plants. It can get into their fruits. It can get into right. if it gets into a mother. It can get into breast milk, which means you got a newborn li- little infant child. Mm-hmm. Fill them up with plastic. Why not? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That's Preparing a good thing. for the future. Yeah. yeah no. Just. I think build, build up it. their resistance a little bit. Yeah. It's it's good for them. It's like, what I've always said. The way Just I see it. A little sprinkling now, immunize them against bigger macroplastics in future. It's the way to do it. You know what? I feel like you're wrong, but I don't know enough to argue. I think you do know. <laughs> I That's know more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. No, um, okay, to be 100% clear, you cannot immunize yourself <laughs> against microplastics with other microplastics. That's just... That's just making you more full of microplastics. I think I think there's a paper in it. Maybe an Ig Nobel Prize one of these days. Dude, I would like I would love I would love an Ig Nobel Prize. Like I yeah. think I think what we should do is probably just start a lab and the entire goal of it. The entire goal is just to get as many Ig Nobel prizes I, as we can. I actually love this. I'd love this. Like every single year like like I think I think we could find the funding for that. I genuinely right? think we could. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think we could do it. And it, it could be a, a lovely podcast. little TV show or a there podcast or something. Yeah. Forget Sci Guys. We're done here. Goodbye. No. Ding ling ling. This prawn in my hand is telling me that that's the ad bell. Goodness me, Corey. When did you learn to speak to prawns? Well, look, I learned to speak prawn as soon as I subscribed to Sci Guys on YouTube and also went ahead and followed them on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That's an awful lot of amazing things you've done there, Corey. I wish that everybody else would do that right now. Yeah. Who Maybe if you follow Sci Guys on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and go ahead and subscribe to Sci Guys on YouTube, you might be able to speak to prawns too. But how much does it cost? It's absolutely free. What? Yes, and not only does it let you speak to prawns, it also supports the show and helps it get out to more people. That is eminently desirable. Yes, it is. So go ahead and subscribe to Sci Guys on YouTube and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you want to speak to prawns. Warning subscribing to Sci Guys on YouTube and following us on Apple and Spotify may not allow you to actually speak to prawns. Okay, Ethan. All right, let's get into the chat about this plastic eating bacteria. What do you know about it? I'm assuming it's some sort of bacteria. Did I ask what you assumed or did I ask what you knew? What I know is it's a bacteria that eats plastic. And apart from that, very little. It is very little. Yeah, well done. (laughs) (laughs) That's many things you know about it. (laughs) So yeah, no, it's this uh, plastic eating bacteria. It's called... Idenol, oh, I really need to start reading these before <laughs> I am on the podcast. Yep. I have a horrible habit of simply looking at a word and being like, yep, I have read this word. I haven't read it. I've looked at all of the letters. I've just, I've, I've seen it. But how do they flow? Like That's my, the real question. My brain recognizes the word. I don't need to read it. Yeah. 
You know, I don't need it's to that. make my mouth go together. It just I know what the word says. Um, <laughs> Idianella uh, Sakaiensis. Uh, so it's nice. named. Yeah, it's named after the city it was discovered in. Okay. Uh, can you guess what the city is called? I think I need to hear the name one more time to be able to. Really Idianella Sakaiensis. Whoa! See, one time and I got it down. It's it's definitely in the second half. Yeah. Oh, a sucker. Sakai. It's oh. Japanese. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not good with my Japanese cities. I'm afraid. Sorry. To your sucker <laughs> with them, <laughs> it'll take you some time <laughs> to learn them. But um, <laughs> okay. I'm. I'm done. I don't want to. Good. Good. <laughs> those were bad. <laughs> those were. Those were quite possibly your worst. So I feel far. like I need to yeah. cut those out. That's how bad those were. But. I probably won't. Anyway, <laughs> so um, these these uh, scientists uh, discovered this sort of plastic-eating bacteria, um, and it wasn't until 2016, I think, that they published their research. They they were working with this bacteria. They were doing some stuff. They were looking at it. Um, basically, what this what this little bacteria was doing. Sorry, they they discovered it in 2001. Yeah, and they published a paper in 2016. Yeah. So for 15 years, they were just. Waiting. I think they were probably studying it and um, trying to um, increase it, sort of uh, make it more potent, um, uh, figuring okay. different things out. Um, yeah. And they, uh, do you know what? This is this is the difficult thing, right? I have seen some publications say that they discovered it in 2016. Mm-hmm. They published it in 2016. I've seen many other places say that they discovered it in 2001. I don't know if there was any announcement between then, mm. but it, you know, this is a this is like this. There's money behind this, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. I guess it makes sense to not want to rush it and to really see if it's viable in any sort of way. I mean, you could speed out a, a study on it, but uh-huh. um, and I feel like that's probably what would happen now. I feel like, uh, you know, it's only been sort of 20 odd years, but I really feel like there's been, I feel like science is very much about headlines and stuff now. I, yeah. I don't know if you feel similarly, like, you know, with your sort of, I don't want to say your field, <laughs> you're not, you're not a scientist, I mean, neither am no, I, true though. but the field that yeah. you sort of studied in uni. Yeah. You know? How do you feel about sort of... It's true. I mean, it's so much of science uh, funding is tied to the interest it gets. Mm-hmm. And that is tied to how well does it play in a news cycle. Mm-hmm. And so when you see articles which, you know, really kind of skew what, um, you know, a headline which skews what a, mm-hmm. what a paper might actually really be about or trying to bury something else... It, you kind of understand where they're coming from because yeah. the reality is that the headline might be misrepresentative. However, at least it's bringing some attention to it in the first place, which is really difficult. However, I would argue that those kind of headlines, I have the same problem with those as I do with fun facts because <laughs> talk about fun <laughs> facts again. I hate fun. No, no, I don't hate fun. You I just hate facts. Well, the fun ones. <laughs> no, no. Like The reason I say I hate fun facts is I don't, like this sort of TikTokification, you can mm. call it. If that would be a very modern way of describing it, that's not how I would usually describe it. But this sort of TikTok TikTokification of um, information of knowledge, right, where you just blurt out some, you know, almost like you know AI generated sort of fact of yeah. like, give me give me a random fact, like a random fact that doesn't connect to anything. Okay, so fun fact: the average pigeon in London has three and a half toes. Right, okay, yeah. So that's a really, like, that's an annoying kind of fun fact, right? Because what does that tell you? Averages are a really, really, really good little way of obscuring information. Yeah. They're a great way of, like, understanding information and making it more, uh, you know, making it making it easier to, making it, making it easier to understand. I'm just yeah. repeating myself. Uh, easier to, like, like a little bite-sized chunk to eat and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a great way of breaking down information yeah. into, um, you know, taking a lot of information and making it um, more manageable, right? Yeah. Averages, like, you know, I'm not going to say that averaging something is bad. Super, super useful, right? However, sometimes averages can obscure, like, <laughs> the information behind them. So if you say the average pigeon has, like, what, three and a half toes? Yeah. Average pigeon in London has three and a half toes, right? That doesn't tell me much about how many toes, like, pigeons have. They're probably, like... Wait, hold on. Three and a half toes? That's a good point, actually. On each foot. So there's lots of pigeons with, like, lots of missing toes, probably, and a few pigeons with all of their toes, and, like, somewhere in between. The point is, it doesn't <laughs> tell you anything about pigeons or anything. No. It's just, here is a thing that here exists. Is a thing that exists. Like, where's the context? Where's the Where's the reasoning? What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Why is that interesting information? You just, you just said a thing, right? <laughs> like, it's... 
it's it's like bloody animal facts, right? Like yeah. it it bugs me to see people just spout like a random animal fact, and like the reason being is that you don't understand what goes on behind it. Like it doesn't yeah. give you an understanding of the creature of the you know of of biology or of like you know any of those kind of animals as a whole. Mm. You just then take that random fact you build like a kind of mental model around it subconsciously even mm. and you walk away thinking something that may not be true at all i'll tell you a good example of that actually is elephants can hear through their feet okay so can elephants hear through their feet or is there like can can like vibrations travel up through their body and they can they can process that in some way it's closer to the second one yeah yeah but it's it, it, but, but it kind of it it there's a way of interpreting the information where you draw the wrong conclusion yeah and like if you don't understand how hearing works then you're like what like that's a weird like it's so many like oxymorons and like little like confusing things like that only come from like it's something that makes complete sense Mm. but it's if it's described in a particular way or if it's given without the full context it becomes you know it, it doesn't make much sense and the yeah the idea okay so um, giraffes are thirty more times to get hit. Uh, thirty more times, uh, thirty times more likely to get hit by lightning than people. Or a cloud weighs around a million tons. Or identical twins that have the same fingerprints. Or Earth's rotation, Earth's rotation is changing speed. Uh, it, like, or yeah. your brain is constantly eating itself, right? These are from BBC Science Focus magazine. One hundred and one facts, uh, fun facts that will blow your mind. <laughs> These aren't blowing my mind. These are no. making me ask. Okay, what does this mean? <laughs> Like yeah. I like it, it, for something to blow my mind, I must like try to comprehend it and be unable to comprehend it. If I, you just say random thing, and I think I don't, that don't make sense. That's not me having a mind blown. That is me saying yeah. one random sentence don't make sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, <laughs> look. Here's it. Like uh, I don't even know how I got onto this. Okay, but the reason I don't yeah, we've like come fun a far facts, away away from where we started. <laughs> the reason I don't like fun facts is because they don't encourage. Like often people spouting fun facts don't encourage curiosity they don't mm. encourage learning it's popcorn yeah. information it's junk food of mm. uh, like for the mind i feel you know like a fun fact should make you i think be like oh i want to know more about this thing yeah it should be a complete meal not just all of all of like all of the candy and sweets you know <laughs> like like <laughs> like fun facts so often <laughs> yeah a nice little pick and mix yeah <laughs> Let's get some frazzles. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't know how I got onto that, but to, to bring it back, um, yeah. So they took a while. Oh, we were talking about how science has changed and the and headlines and the headlines and, and funding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think those headlines are a lot like fun facts in that, like, they they have that negative impact on people, wherein people see a headline that says, you know, oh gosh, what is it? I think there was one recently about you know, oh scientists have discovered that there's an alphabet in how whales talk, and it's like. I know that people are going to take that like way more literally <laughs> than what it means. Like what it probably has happened, and I've not looked into this story at all. What's probably happened is that scientists have studied whale calls and found that there's like different things that they use to communicate like different meanings or yeah, probably like specific like phonetic sounds that yeah. they have within their vocabulary. And instead, exactly. you've got a lot of people thinking a whale is there singing A B C D. Yeah, <laughs> and like maybe not that literally, but they don't necessarily. It, it doesn't come across like what. Like what is intended doesn't come across, right? No, no. And yeah. and you need to be so careful with that because a lot of the population doesn't have science education beyond like high school, like mm. the middle of high school, really, like really early high school. And you know the people that do have the education beyond that point, some of them might not even remember it or be all that interested or anything like that. And so much has changed even since I was in school mm. that you know things are out of date. People's understanding of things could be 20 years out of date, which yeah. is insane with some fields. Like the amount that can change in 20 years, like, you know, in the past sort of 20 years, we've gone from not ha like having a concept to microplastics to yeah. being one of the biggest bloody problems You're right. You're that we've right. got. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think those kind of headlines are not, not great, but I understand why they're done. Mm. And ultimately it's just an issue of like funding for science like mm. we need to fund things that are financially worthless um yeah. or seem financially worthless yeah because they may prove financially fruitful but also because the knowledge might be you know helpful for other things yeah like we can't just build one single really tall jenga tower right <laughs> we yeah. need to have really strong foundations build out as much as we're building up yeah i think it's i think it's important that actually we're kind of trying to diversify as much in what we're researching because 
you also don't know along the line when that research is going to be needed. Yeah. It's it's not a bad thing to be more inquisitive around, about the world around us. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And unlocking a lot of that knowledge along the way because it makes things easier in the future. Mm. We could be speeding things up that might be necessary at a point, you know, 50 years down the line. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say we lost too much i don't want to say we lost a lot you know when science stopped being random rich dudes in their you know <laughs> in their sheds cooking yeah. up potions and and discovering gravity and you know stuff like that but like yeah. i mean we lost something when like when science stopped being random rich dudes yeah. working in their sheds or in the case of Mary curie random ladies working, working in their in sheds, sheds. <laughs> <laughs> blowing stuff up yeah. um, but uh. <laughs> But yeah, no, like I, I, the the sort of um people following a whim, um or an interest mm. has a lot of value. I think I agree. Um, but also yeah, like you know, it's really difficult to do that in a way that is that isn't sort of built upon the consolidation of power and wealth, mm. uh, such that someone can just follow whims or interests without any sort of care for anything else. It's mm. a really difficult balancing act. But I think we're not doing it as well as we we're could not. be. I agree. And so, yeah, so it took them a while to publish their work. So they discovered it in 2001, and then 15 years later published it in uh, Science, which is a journal. I know that might be confusing if you're not <laughs> aware of Science the Journal. It is a journal. It's it's where you, you put scientific papers. You publish uh, it to there. It's very straightforward. I like the idea that things are just named after their subjects. Like, you know, we, we, <laughs> we've just got, oh, yeah, I found a really cool thing about squirrels. I published it in Squirrels Magazine. <laughs> well, like, look, okay, there are lots of journals that are nuts just magazine. what they are. Sorry. I mean, nuts <laughs> Magazine, haha. Ha. Like, there's lots of, there's, look, there are lots of journals that are just named what they are. Science, guy, come on, science. Like, let's, like, yeah. you, you can't have a monopoly over the no, word I'm, for the thing that we're all doing we're not known for our creativity though are we <laughs> so true so so true uh so yeah um they they published their work it was in science which i mean if you're not aware it is like one of the journals right it's like, the big boy yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. like if you see something in science it's science it, or nature yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nature. Boy, forgot you started. about nature <laughs> oh uh anyway so <laughs> <laughs> um, science and nature, yeah, they're the two big ones, right? Uh, and this this paper, it was cited so many times. It was it's in the top zero point one percent of all papers. Um, and so we look at the bacteria, and we find I say we they looked at the bacteria, and they found um, that it had these two enzymes, many more enzymes, but these two specific enzymes that we're mm. interested in, um, called hydrolyzing PET um, or PETAs. Um, okay. Yeah. So PET being the name of the Polyethylene plastic. Polyethylene terephthalate. Number one recyclable. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that thing. Was a, the thal- 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> I don't even need to. I don't need to know what PET stands for, do I? No. PET is fine. PET, easy. <laughs> so um, basically, these enzymes break down um, the uh, polymers mm. into monomers, right? Nice. Okay, so they just yeah. kind of, they kind of like, and that's. I mean, you just snip it up. Snip. Yep. Yeah, similar to how if you you break down starch into glucose, right? In your mouth, you've got. Um, yep. You've got this amylase. Um, yeah, amylase. Is it's an enzyme, uh, and it breaks down starch. Um, and so you just you just break the polymer down into mol- monomers. You just split those those bonds between those individual units, and you've got just all these subunits to kick nice. about, right? Easy stuff. Yeah, fantastic, right? And so there's two different things that it's broken down into: mm. uh, terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. And then those get broken Sorry, down. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't catch that the first time. Can you say that? No, a few times. You can. No? Well, you know what you, you can do? You can wait till this episode out. You can uh-huh. go back uh-huh. and uh, you can listen to me say it then. Fine. Okay. Uh, or you could edit yourself repeating it a few times for me. That'll work. Terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. I know that. Okay. I know that it sounds like I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's quite literally spelled T R T E R E P H T H A L I C. Ter Terephthalic. Good job. Yeah. Terephthalic acid. Ter- terephthalic. Terephthalic. No phallic on this podcast. Thank you very much. P H T H. Terephthalic acid. I was missold. I was missold. <laughs> <laughs> and ethylene glycol. And then those are broken down. And the it's the breaking down of those two monomers that um the the uh what is it the bacteria uses for energy, right? Nice. Um, and so obviously we discovered this and we were like oh, we should start using this for things. And yeah. um, one of the main things that was done um, pretty quickly was, um, or, you know, one of the main things that was focused on pretty quickly was trying to take this enzyme, mm. put it into another bacteria that is um, 
just mm-hmm. better at making enzymes. <laughs> so like, there's a I reason we it, use E. coli yeah. for a lot, right? Um, and we e- use E. coli for this. Yeah, so we're wanting to, we're trying to put, basically it's putting this uh, enzyme into E. coli so that E. coli can produce a ton of the enzyme and then that enzyme can break down you know, all of the, like, all of the plastic that we, all the PET that we've got. It's nice to finally have a use for something like that. I mean, yeah. may, is it, is it used for a lot more than just, I don't know, uh, well, I, I guess I only know it as bad thing make you ill, Um, but is it, is, is, is so it's useful in these sort of cases? Then? Do, it, so it's useful, it, I mean, it, oh, E. coli, yeah. Oh, e. coli. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can put, you can, look, the way that biotech works is, You've got some organisms, you've got some, you know, some bacteria, some um, fungi, like yeast is one that we are, we love, we, we know how to, we know how to work mm-hmm. with yeast, it's really great, you chuck something to eat, into yeast, and it starts making it for you, right? Oh, nice. Um, we've got, like, a lot of organisms that were like, yeah, you chuck, a, you chuck a, like, a gene into that, and it starts producing it like mad, it's very good. Question, if I mm-hmm. put an M&M inside an E. coli, how long would it take before I get a bag of M&Ms? I don't even know where to begin with the problems with what you just said. Well, let's start with the orange ones, because those are my favorites. Uh, how? Okay, okay. Explain to me your process for taking an M&M, um, a macroscopic, something visible, yeah. without you know, the use of um, any visual aid. Yeah. You can see it with the naked eye. Uh-huh. How are you going to put that inside of E. coli, uh, like a single E. coli bacterium, which is as I'm sure you're aware, literally microscopic. I think I think you should stop like judging people by their size. Mm-hmm. Firstly, I think that's a good like starting point. Really, mm-hmm. um, if you if you like turn it inside out mm-hmm. and like stretch it over, yeah, uh-huh. I think I could make it work. Okay, uh, you might not be able to. Yeah, I do you know I, what? I might I not could. be able to. Yeah. Um. So just make sure you're not using a virulent strain of E. coli, otherwise, you know. Oh, no, I wouldn't be that reckless. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think I'm stupid? Yeah. When you do it by hand, you yeah. stretch out your E. coli. Yeah. yeah. yeah look. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you figure out that TARDIS tech, yeah. you you get back to me. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um. I thought yeah. we could work on it together, but <laughs> fine. I'm. You can look. <laughs> You work with your E. coli, and I will stay as far away from you as humanly possible. Fine, fine. Uh, but even look, even if we can break down uh, this one plastic, that's one kind of plastic. There's still like I think six other types that we can't degrade using enzymes. Mm. Um, and if you want to, like, okay, so you might be thinking, wait, why is there only one kind of bacteria that can break down plastic? Right? Surely, mm. you know, bacteria creating enzymes can break down lots of things. So when trees came about, right? I was going to say when they were invented, but when trees <laughs> came about. Um, and they sort of died. Not much could break down the lignin, the sort of the, the sort of support structure, the thing that's, that sort of makes them one of the things that makes them really tough and woody, right? Mm. Couldn't break down the lignin, um, and so that just kind of sat around for a while. And then suddenly, something you know evolved to be able to break that down, right? It takes mm. a while for something like that to happen if you've got a really really strong um, sort of got a really strong um, compound or chemical right. um, that that kind of evolves. It's not necessarily it, like you know, something isn't necessarily going to immediately evolve to mm. um, digest that. And so, you know, it's great that we found one that can do it, but, you know, we can't rely on this just naturally occurring Got it. in enough time to stop total, you know, yeah. disaster. So is it like the mutations specifically of the bacteria that's then meant, and, and we have plastic accessible to us obviously now, so mm. we can see that it actually does affect it. Yeah. It might have been that this has evolved at different points in the past. Well, maybe, maybe. but I think I, I think it's probably more likely that this would have evolved um, to break down these plastics, right? Right. Like as in, because bacteria can evolve, but well, bacteria can evolve, like because they, their their generations are so much quicker than ours. Hmm. Um, you can really see like quite seemingly rapid like mutations. Um, you know, over a, like quite a short period of time with bacteria mm. and other sort of microbes, right? Yeah. Um. So I would wager that this evolved, you know, um, because of like in response to the plastic, right. probably, right? Huh. Because, um, yeah. I mean, it, we do have sort of there are enzymes to break down natural polymers, mm. but you know, plastic is quite a bit stronger um than a lot of natural polymers, and there's so many yeah. different types, and you know, I mean, like, mm. um. You know, but then it very, it very. I don't know though. It very well could be that this um kind of existed before in some form. In yeah. fact, the way that evolution works, it probably did exist before in some form. But like, um, I I doubt that it would have evolved to be the way that it is now. Right. Quite yeah. a while in the past. Okay. Right. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, so on top of that, we want to bioengineer sort of um, this enzyme, uh, put it into different, um, put it into different sort of, you know, what's it called? Different uh, organisms to make uh -huh. them uh, sort of produce it in greater quantities, um, uh, sort of alter this enzyme itself so that it could um, sort of digest uh, faster or more effectively, or mm -hmm. even maybe try and do different kinds of plastics. But yeah, so... Um, We've got um we they've, they've, we've got this sort of um cocktail of enzymes okay. <laughs> is to quote the, in my notes cocktail of enzymes um where you kind of you mix uh, PETAs with um MHETAs which is another plastic eating enzyme um and then that can digest like it it, <laughs> it digests plastics like much better as it uh, digests okay. two different kinds of plastic and this PETAs um they've kind of bioengineered it so mm -hmm. that it digests plastic like six times faster than the sort of natural nice. one nice and so you know it's this kind of like bioengineering work this biotechnology that you know we're kind of using we're kind of taking living stuff mm -hmm. and trying to make it work to break down this sort of unnatural yeah. stuff right and that's prevalent throughout like so much of our technology like so much of our technology is just like hey what did nature do let's steal it <laughs> like <laughs> nature nature does well for these things oh yeah, yeah. you know yeah. you can't beat like million like millions and millions of years yeah. of of work and i guess it's like it, it's not even just the time it's that biological organisms are so complex mm. and they're that you know the the kind of equivalent computational power of like an organism mm. compared to an actual you know physical electronic computer yeah would be so massive oh, yeah, like, absolutely. and and so you've essentially got these organisms working on on the problem in a sense oh uh, yeah yeah for, for, for years and so complexly and too. in so many different places as well like if you mm. think about um like how small bacteria are and how yeah. prevalent they are they're like everywhere mm. and they're just chugging away yeah constantly i mean we could there could be more of these um sort of plastic eating bacteria you know mm. um that we've just not discovered yet yeah. as well you know, um, and so it is. It is awesome. I mean, to kind of uh, end this, unless you've got anything else you want to say. No, great. Well, one last cool little thing is that at the University of Edinburgh, um, they've <laughs> they've tried to change plastic into uh, vanillin, which is the sort of vanilla yeah, flavoring. flavoring. But, yeah, and that's like <laughs> that's really, really um, sort of widely sought after. It's one of okay. the most like sort of um, desired chemicals. It does in sound the world. a little bit like alchemy at this point. Like yeah, <laughs> but literally, <laughs> literally, the the idea is to use E. coli to transform um, plastic into vanillin, and I think they've actually managed to do it. Basically, you you degrade PET down into the, those basic monomer components. Yeah, and then you. <laughs> You take one of the monomers, um, the terra. Why did it have to be this one? Terephthalic acid, <laughs> and you turn that into uh, vanillin. Um, you just like like treating it chemically, like a bunch of different chemical reactions. Mm. Um, and we okay, we need to look into it more apparently, mm -hmm. but it should be fit. Like people should be able to eat it. Okay, right. It should be safe. Okay. I'm I'm on board with the science. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But can you imagine? We already have people having issues with 5G towers, right? Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine telling somebody that their McFlurry has plastic kind of eaten by, you know, enzymes or E. coli to turn it into vanilla flavoring to go in their McFlurry? Like, I, I, I feel like... Just don't tell them. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I think we just don't... Oh, cause, wait, no, because then they'll find out. And yeah, then... exactly. And that's going to make it so much worse. <laughs> You, oh my god oh god it's gonna be a bloody nightmare isn't it that's honestly a pr disaster yeah, just yeah. waiting to happen <laughs> good <laughs> lord but i mean i think that is all from us there's just one thing left to do ethan do you know what that is <gasps> no, it's not the quick for a quiz is thanking all of our new patrons <gasps> thank you to river thanks frech dax 22 thanks brenna thanks nephily thanks kyle thanks angelina J. thank you molly and thank you casper also thank you mark o'brien thank you to flammable thank you to lu0805 thank you to ava marsh thank you to evan volgazang i'd also like to say thanks to ethan i'd like to say thank you to molly aikima thank you to asherton is in love thank you to sophie J. thanks fox thanks holly wilson of course Thank you, Death Bunny 5000. Thank you to Tommy. Thank you to Olivia Glover. Big thanks to Cora Laub. And finally, a thank you to our brand new executive producer, Cody Miller. 
<sighs> oh boy, that was a lot of patrons to thank. Yeah, what a lot of them there were. But there's just one thing left for us to do. <gasps> it's a quick fire quiz. Dun dun dun. Plastic heating edition. So the rules for the quick fire quiz are the same as always. I'll ask one question. That's one question between you and the audience. The first person to answer the question after finish asking wins. What did they win, Ethan? They win a... Uh, entrance to my polycule. <laughs> you realise a prize has to be, like, desirable, right? Like, this is a punishment, no? Do you realise you're also in the same polycule? <laughs> we need to have a conversation after this. So... We do. <laughs> <laughs> my question for you is, uh, what was uh, one of them monomers that I just mentioned? The difficult to pronounce one. Say it. <laughs> uh, poly... No, no, it's not obviously not poly. Um, <laughs> Terraf... <laughs> Phallic acid. No, try it again. Terephthalate. It's something in there. there no, is a, you, you, there I just wanted you to say it again. Was it that is, right? Yeah, it is a uh, terephthalic acid. Um, it is, go. Why no. do you why do you look at me as though I got it wrong? Oh, you didn't get. It's not that you got it wrong. I just wanted to hear you say it again. <laughs> terephthalic acid. Terephthalic acid. You said it so uh, sort of, uh, so sheepishly. Say it with some confidence. Terephthalic acid. <laughs> Fantastic. Terrific. No. No. Well, that is all from us. But before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with an extra special thank you to executive producers, Glitch Rabbit and Rev Lunar. And thank you for watching. You can find the full reference for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? Support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys. Or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. <gasps> Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. And you can follow me at Ethan Rupert Radio everywhere. Uh, bye. See ya. <laughs>